Hi there, it's Alexandra from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog and today I'll be talking about the top garden tips that I've picked up from interviewing professional gardeners and top garden experts over the last few years. And this is being done in collaboration with Erin of the Impatient Gardener YouTube channel and blog. Erin's delightful channel is about gardening in very much in the same way as the Middle Sized Garden is, but she gardens in the United States in a USDA hardiness zone of 5, which means that her winters can go down to the minus 20s in both Celsius and Fahrenheit. Whereas I garden here in South East England, which equates to a USDA hardiness zone of 9, and my winters rarely go below minus 6 Celsius. And yet we grow many of the same plants and the gardening principles are the same. So the tips in this video will apply really no matter where you garden. There'll be links to Erin's YouTube channel and blog in the description below and also to other resources that I mention. If you're new here, the Middle Sized Garden uploads videos every week. And if you want to see them when you open up YouTube, click the subscribe button. It, they're completely free. And if you want YouTube to tell you when new video has been uploaded, then click the notifications bell. My first top gardening tip was one given to me when I moved into this garden 17 years ago. A friend of mine worked for the Royal Horticultural Society and I asked him what I should do as someone who had a new garden and knew nothing about gardening. And he said, just weed and mulch for the first year. So for the first year, I literally would take a little patch in the garden, I'd go down on my hands and knees, pull the weeds up by hand and then when I cleared a small area I'd cover it with well rotted manure or garden compost. It meant I had to find out which were weeds and which were plants. And of course today there's a more relaxed attitude to weeds and many plants that gardeners used to consider weeds are now considered plants that can live happily in the garden. I've done a video with author and blogger Jack Wallington which I'll put in the description below about this new attitude to weeds. Weeding will teach you a huge amount about plants and about what you want and don't want in your garden. My second tip does relate to the first tip, which is don't do too much of anything all at once. Gardens grow every day and if you wait until you've got a whole morning or a whole afternoon free or a whole day free to do all your gardening, you'll get out there and the amount of garden that you'll see will be absolutely overwhelming. And then if you don't get out again for another two or three, four or five weeks, you'll be overwhelmed again. Try to get out into the garden every day at least once and just do something. I've always set a timer for 15 minutes and particularly if it's a job I really don't want to do. And I've just said, well, I'll do 15 minutes because I work from home and I can find 15 minutes in my day. And when the timer goes off, I'll sometimes reset it for another 15 minutes, but sometimes I'll just say, OK, I've done that for the day and I'll do some more tomorrow. And actually those 15 minutes really add up, because if you did that four times a week, that's an hour's gardening a week. And most small and middle sized gardens will really benefit from that. Of course, you will have to do some longer jobs and take more time sometimes, but there won't be so much to do. And also you'll be really on top of what needs to be done and when to do it. So you'll be much more familiar with your garden. Quick jobs include things like deadheading or watering the vegetables in the summer or just pulling out the most obvious weeds. My third tip is probably the most important gardening tip you will ever hear. And it took me years to understand that it applied to me, that the rules applied to me. I don't know why I thought they didn't. And that is right plant, right place. If you've got a shady border, you need to plant plants in it that are happy in shade. And if a plant says that it needs full sun, you need to plant it in a part of your garden that is very sunny. The same goes for how much water it needs. If you don't have much rainfall, then choose plants that say they like well-drained soil or are drought tolerant. And there's a video on dry gardens in the description below when I visited the Beth Chateau Gardens here in Britain. Perhaps one of the biggest mistakes you can make here is to try and make a shady border sunnier by cutting down trees near it. If it's a north facing border, it's always going to be shady. If you cut down the trees, there'll be a bit more light, but it's not really going to change anything. And human beings are descended from forest edge dwellers. And we have a basic instinctive need to have a tree in the area where we live. Trees are also very good for air quality and for wildlife, and they add a vertical interest to your garden. So there are times when trees need cutting down, when they've got 
too big, too old, they should never have been there in the first place. So I'm not saying don't ever cut down a tree, but I am saying that if you're thinking of cutting down a tree, examine the pros and cons very carefully and don't expect it to make a huge difference to a north-facing border. There's a very pretty video, which I'll put in the description below, of how someone with a north-facing garden has made it look really pretty and sunny. The next tip comes from Erin. Hi everyone, Erin from The Impatient Gardener here and I wanted to share a couple of my garden tips that you really should think about doing in your garden. And the first one is that if you're moving into a new garden or reworking a part of your garden, sit down and come up with some sort of plan before you just go out and start willy-nilly buying plants. I know the plant buying part is really the exciting part of creating a new garden area, but I think you'll save yourself time and money and frustration if you take a step back, come up with a plan, and then go from there. And I don't even think you need to come up with a plan that is involves specific plants, but I think have a general idea of the type of plants you might be looking for, a color scheme, what sort of texture might you might need in that area, a size of a plant, and that narrows it down a little bit, as well as sort of how big of an area this is gonna be, what kind of feel it's gonna have, I think just taking a few steps back, coming up with a general concept for a design before you run out and start buying plants will always be a good step in the right direction to having the garden that you really want in the end. So to me, I think this is the biggest thing that you really must do in your garden, and that is create the garden that you want. The only person who has to really love your garden is you. So do what you want in your garden. Don't be swayed because something isn't necessarily popular or it's not what the neighbors are doing. I think gardens should be a place that we make for ourselves. And if people like them, that's great. And if they don't, it doesn't matter because it's really your place in the end. So when you're creating your garden and coming up with what plants you want or what you want it to look like or the feel of the whole place, this is one place in our lives where we can do exactly what makes us happy. And I think that's what you should do in your garden. So whether this be something where you want a lot of whimsy and garden art in your garden, or whether you want something really formal, even though maybe you don't live in an area that's suited to formal, I don't think any of that matters. I think you just do what you love and then it will become a fabulous garden. Now, I completely agree with Erin on this because when I moved into the garden and knew so little about garden, Gardening. I asked everybody who loved gardening or who was an expert for their advice and I learned so much and it was so valuable and you should always take notice of what people say. But most importantly, there's the question of what you like. And I think when you first start gardening, you don't even know what you like. And people, everyone came in and said that they didn't like this plant, which is an Acuba japonica, that I should take it out. And fortunately, I just didn't take it out. I just forgot, really. And um, I suddenly realised, actually, nobody likes it except me, but I like it. And I thought it had a really good presence. It's in a dark corner. It's got these light, spotty leaves. And I like it. But it took me a few years before I felt I had the confidence to actually make that decision. So what are the mistakes that we gardeners really need to avoid? Well, if you pop on over to The Impatient Gardener, you'll see me and Erin both talking about the mistakes that we've made or that people we know have made and which will really help you in gardening if you don't make them. Do let me know what tips you have found really useful in your gardening life. And if you'd like more tips, ideas, or inspiration, then do subscribe to the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.